Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to what will surely be a slobber knocker of a match tonight in Div C West. The first game of the playoffs tonight featuring CCS, can't counterpick stupid, that is, against Roll1 Esports, our away team tonight. I am joined by the one and only Crizzo, who I believe has spit up over his keyboard. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I heard, I feel like I've heard CCS use that from time to time. Uh, do me a favor and talk just a little bit. Yeah, I don't think you're coming through. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> nope, you definitely are not. Uh, that is because my Discord has to be set to game. There we go. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. All right, and I believe. Okay, so they can hear you. That's great. Test, I, I, test, I, test. One, two, five, nine, three. Yeah, why is it always one, two, three? The other numbers really get some love, too. Yeah, mm. you have to love the numbers. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Anyway, we should probably talk a little bit about what's going on here tonight. So it's a Div C West matchup. This is the 2 6 seed, right? Uh, no, this is the 3 six seed. 3 6. Okay. Like the Mafia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> CCS banning out uh, Alterac Pass and Battlefield of Eternity. And Roll One Esports banning Braxis and. <clears throat> what's the other one? Garden of Terror. Yes. These are both really seasoned teams that have been around for quite a while. I'm super stoked to, uh, to see how this turns out tonight. Both teams are, are definitely homies. Uh, Chris and I have both had our own teams in, in this division. Got to play against them all. Uh, mostly for the worse on my side. You fared a little bit better than we did. But now Blue is quiet. How is Blue quiet? How can I possibly be quiet? You're never quiet. Oh, I just, I'm a little quiet. Okay, I can turn that up a bit. Thank you, Gus. I appreciate you. How about that for quiet? Beautiful. I don't know how to turn me up any more than it is other than Oh, I could turn me up a Discord actually and that might help. It's gonna throw everybody else off, but that's okay. Oh up my volume's already maxed out. Look sensitivity. Testing testing testing. Oh that sounds okay. I think it's better now. Gossip's this is the game. first Sea uh, West playoff game for us tonight. I love it. Awfully and Anna says go casters in the NGS chat. Appreciate that. What's an Awfully and Anna? Never heard of her. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, you strike me as a man of culture. What are you drinking tonight, good sir? Oh, God. Um, you caught me drinking, you know, the, the, Please don't say Bud Light. adult beverage <laughs> of not Bud Light, but, uh, Michelob Ultra tonight. Okay. Gotta okay. watch the girlish figure a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Only, uh, what was that? 64 calories in the Michelob Ultra? Uh, who knows? Isn't that the who only knows? We... Is that Michelob is a beer no, that we... has no calories? You just, you don't worry about any of that. You just see the word ultra and you go with it. <laughs> it's like, ooh, all natural, <laughs> vegan, uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Gluten free. Exactly. Well, I have a combination of whole milk, um, ice cubes, Jack whole Daniels milk? brown cinnamon sugar, uh, like cream or something. And also, um, what else? Oh, rum chata. Put some rum chata in here too. So oh, it's, it's a good mixture. That sounds delicious. It sounds dangerous. Welcome. We're asking if they need to start a timer on Zad. Apparently, they're a little bit worried about the win if they are already trying to pull the timer. Gingy is still kind of quiet. Know? I'm not entirely sure how to fix that. Sound mixer settings. Um, just eat your mic. That might be better. Uh, no. I 
I could do and I could do this. I could change this to chat. And then change. This to chat. That should maybe kind of fix it. Uh, Krizzler, are you? Can you still hear me? Can you say something? I can hear you, and I can say something. <clears throat> maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know if I have. Do I have a limiter on this at all? No. I could pull the mic a little bit closer to me. That would help, surely. Just eat it. Hello. Oh yes. It's me. You sounded uh, like you were inside of me. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> to sound like I'm inside of you. Uh huh. Life happens. There's Zad. There we go. Let's go. Kind of quiet, but hella cute. Aw, Gibbs. Always. I don't know how to tr literally turn the volume up on everybody. It's kind of weird. It's it's absolutely cranked. I'm worried I'm going to blow people's eardrums out now. Are you going into the red? Right um, no. But if I go to properties, maybe I can go to filters. Threshold, don't be loud. Oh, what if I want to be loud? <laughs> what if, oh, wait, can I just delete this filter? Remove. Maybe the filter was actually stopping it from doing something. It should be a little bit better now, I hope. Possibly. Like, when I get all excited, maybe it'll... <laughs> You'll better. bust everyone's eardrums yeah. and headphones. <clears throat> Getting R's out across the board. Uh, so, Dragonshire Game 1. Um, what do you want to see here? What do you like to see here? Uh, globals. I mean, it's just ultimately super strong. Do you prefer a one three one? Do you want a, a goalkeeper right. bottom? If you, you... yeah, basically <laughs> goalkeeper. Yeah. Yes. I mean, one three one is the way to play this map, or a one one three. Now I have no game audio. This is awesome. I'm doing really good. I am, by the way, the assistant headcaster of NGS. By the way, <clears throat> so if you're ever looking for how to put up quality streams, please uh, contact me at any time. Get a Stukov ban. I feel like a, a good Junkrat, a good Chromie, um, could wreck on this map. Um, if you're decent with Zul'jin, Stukov, of course. All the point control. Yeah, point control very important here. Um, if either of these teams plays Vikings, that's always in consideration too. It's probably the best Viking map in the game. Garrosh, Garrosh ban. 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 Pretty standard uh, coming against CCS, I feel. It's a very standard Div C ban. I feel like the only two tanks yeah. the entire division played was Varian and Garrosh, so I expect to see them highlighted here in full full effect. Um, but yeah, global is very important. Rex are extremely strong on that, that top lane if the offlaner is able to effectively micro the Misha. <clears throat> Macro is super important. Lot Johanna of, comes out. A lot of cheesy things you can do with the map as well, so we'll see what they decide to do, but um, both these teams and, and Roll1 Esports was one of the first ones to take down only losses who went on quite a tear early. Oh, my scene has not changed. They're drafting. <laughs> hey, we're drafting, by the way, teams. <laughs> we get rid of the hogger on the side of Roll1. Let's see what our first pick's gonna be. I would really like to see a Junkrat here, but I don't know if CCS plays it. Brightwing's still up, too. It's really hard to pass up a Brightwing on this map. It basically makes the offlaner. No, no one else can see the draft, Genji. It's fine. Oh, we take the Anduin. <laughs> what a great name, Ola Kahoma. Anduin is rather surprising. Although not nearly as surprising as Sonya Jaina. Jane huh. not necessarily known for being S tier. Um, Have you seen Roll One play it? 
I have seen them play it, yes. And have I, you I seen Row 1 play Sonya? <laughs> I don't necessarily knock the fact that there are good Jaina players. It's just in the grand scheme of the draft, something like a Falstad, perhaps, or a Brightwing, or a Nahaka seems to have priority over what will surely be up in the next phase of picks for them. I but agree. Jaina probably I do really find into the process, so we'll see how they, they work with it. I do find uh, a lot of teams, including my own team, uh, in this division have trouble utilizing multiple global characters properly. <laughs> I don't know what you're so, talking about. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Apparently Valkymer is streaming, by the way. And is showing all of his draft picks. Ouch. Okay. Interesting. A bold and interesting choice there from Valkymer. <clears throat> we may see a hammer. <laughs> Just depending on... Uh, okay, well. It didn't look like there was much of a delay either, because they were definitely in draft, and he was definitely showing the picks. So, Getting rid of that Nova. Mongoose isn't allowed to play that. Oh, and roll one gets rid of mm. the hammer. I didn't notice Mongoose there. He was not around when we had played them. Uh, during the NGS season, we played a couple of scrims against him when he was around. But Zero Tool definitely on the table for the side of roll one. Mongoose plays all of those spicy, invisible, terrifying characters. Mm, that's why you see him having last pick. That's a lot of CC from uh, from roll one esports. Although one good gust can basically negate a lot of that progress. It'll negate. What I'd say a good ninety eight percent of all of that progress. Yeah, a noob goes in, everybody else gets blown away, a noob just dies. This could easily be a Varian, although this could just be like a Varian hammer if that's what they were going with on the stream. No. Hammer is trees. a band. Oh hammer and we did take get a band. Illidan material. Um so without ice block, Jaina just explodes. However, with the ice block uh, completed, the target then becomes Deckard. And the Tyrael could be to completely counter whatever nonsense Mongoose was going to do here. If it was going to be that Zerath, <laughs> Sanct is going to be really clutch. It is time. Double Bruiser with a Zool. That's... I don't hate it. I don't hate it either. The, the one thing that Roll1 does is they macro their balls off. I mean, they just they know how to take buildings. And but so does CCS. They do, with the but globals. they don't necessarily have the tools this time around like Roll1 Esports does. I think draft-wise, they're pretty even. It's going to be interesting to see. Like, Zol has to be on top of the Illidan. Otherwise, there's just nothing slowing him down. There's no auto-attacker. and uh, I don't know. It's going to be really interesting to see what the actual focus is here for these teams. I'm excited. Good spice, different drafts. Yeah, different You don't see the, well. the normal stuff. Hmm. No Brightwing. No Brightwing. Not banned, not picked. Wild. Mm-hmm. In a map where three globals are taken, not one of them is Brightwing. Heroes, prepare for combat. From left to right tonight, we have what is our home team, our higher seed in Can't Counterpick Stupid. We have Unicycle Ye playing the... I'm just going to cheat and do it this way. Playing the Illidan Valkymer on the Tyrael, Zephyr on Tahaka, Dr. Evil on Palmstead, <clears throat> and Wit's End on that Anduin. Battle commencing. And on the... Red team, we have Rock Your World on Anubarak, Waniba on Deckard, Mongoose on Sonya, Jason on Jaina, and Zul played by Zad. We go to our first ARAM scrim of the match, a best of three tonight in this playoff format. I believe the next round will be best of five. But this one is only best of three. Waniba sprinkles some potions around the bushes. Top side, bottom side. 
seemed very content, can't counter pick stupid, to just allow them to clear that wave quickly and rotate out. It's actually a really smart potion placement. A little bit everywhere. Gave it a good sprinkle. Good dive there onto Valkymer. This is what we're talking about there. That W from Janel already placed on the towers. Health comes back, towers do not. Any amount of chip damage without Navitha in the game is going to be a permanent uh, thing. I think I missed the, the, the swap between uh, Zed and Mongoose, between the, the Sonya and the Zul. Yeah, they did swap. I think, um, I think initially I mean, it's like the game was on one and then they swapped. But, um, we see both teams not pressuring one another, both getting their siege camp up here. Any team has the ability to try to take a camp from one another, it's definitely going to be CCS with those double globals. We see Sonya here in the bottom lane with Zul double soaking. It's a four man Sonya, which. I mean, anything about Mongoose, you know he doesn't play the meta. So, really interesting to see this interaction down here. Let me take a quick look at the talents. It's Q from Falstad. Big dive onto Wit's end, does go waning there, but really good follow up there from the I don't love the Deckard's uh, level 1, but I trust Juaniba's healing 110%. I think she is yeah. wonderful with what she does. That's a really early Dragon Knight here from the side of Roll 1 Esports. Super early. This map was chosen by Roll 1 Esports. So they're going to be more comfortable here than obviously the team that did not choose it. Meanwhile, Zul double soaking. And here's the thing with Zul you have to stop him. You have to slow him down somehow. You have to run him on the three. You have to be able to punish him somehow so that he can't just continually push these minions in. And right now with the Dragonite top, you see Zul here on the mid lane. Just kind of taking free real estate. Dr. Heal rotating up here. Surprisingly not going on roll one with that. Now he is. This is going to be the first blood of the game. Valkymer going in with that sword and stabbing him in the back. First blood. <laughs> First Dragon didn't get uh, too much value anywhere. No, nothing on top lane. I thought I saw it up there for a moment. Maybe it was just clearing wave. Didn't get a lot mid and bottom, essentially nothing. Big engager on Wit's end, who's caught out. Jaina with beautiful follow up on Eva again. And now, maybe a counter kill here from Unicycle Yay, but a great potion there by the Deckard. Sonya coming in from the top lane. Unicycle Yay has got to get out of there now. Good stun by the Nubarak, and down goes the Illidan. Falcon are now in a lot of trouble. Zul cannot get away. Three kills the one now, just like that, in favor of Roll One Esports. That fight could have gone either way with the amount of mana that uh, Roll One had, but they they pushed their buttons well. And here's what you're seeing out of Roll One that you've seen so often this season is just really focused on macro, really focused on taking out those buildings. Big wave crashing middle for Illidan to clean up as the Zul continues to be a nuisance. <clears throat> Tens are going to change things, though. Tens are definitely strong for both teams. And they're, they're just really... From, from CCS, they haven't used their globals. They have not yet sent the Falstad up to try to gank. The Tahaka has not dug yet. <clears throat> and this is what I was mentioning. The, uh, the, the teams in our division, we, we don't uh, use the globals the way I feel like they should be used. We played a, a few games of Faust of the season and didn't really have much success with it either. Um, you know, you feel like you whole... need it in the team fights, but yeah. at, in the same respect, you should send them away. Well, here we go. Here's an opportunity for Global to come in. Here is the Dahaka, exactly what we've been talking about. Yes. Roll one esports getting crushed in the back line, but it looks like they're going to be able to get away. And now, because of that, and the fact that all of Roll one esports lives, we have a full camp pushing here with Zul running it down top. This bottom camp is camp is going to be cleared relatively quickly <laughs> by this Jaina, by this Sonya. Falstead now goes to the top. Falstead flies top. Yep. I don't hate it. 
It's the counter globals. Harkin Giants Bane says, Mommy laying in bed, falling asleep to the soothing sounds of Chris's voice. Thus, oh my god. Big gauge here. Now, on to Valkamar. Ton of damage being done to that Tyrael, but he's going to be able to get away. Both globals are top to the side of CCS. I believe they both uh, do not have dig or fly. So they're going to have to waddle slash fly back down here. We take a look at the alts for each team. CCS going for that Sanctification, which is kind of interesting. We do see Hunt, Isolation, Hintelin Blast, and Light Bomb. Meanwhile, from the side of Rolling Esports, it's Cocoon, Stay a While, Listen to Leap, uh, Poison Nova, and Water Elementals. A little bit of an engage here onto the material. Can they kill him? Here's a Light Bomb, but it does go waning. All the damage being done onto Jason without that uh, Ice Block, but the material is going to be the first to fall. Everything went on to the Jaina, and he could not get a kill. Great move again from Maniva. Big engage there on the Zephy without that burrow. Stun again, follow-up from Maniva. Absolutely ruining the lives of CCS here in the early game. I really think we missed a great opportunity with not having Gust here. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> I would definitely agree. I mean, they have the opportunity to go either full offense or full defense, and they kind of split it up in a weird way. I think I would have gone Judgment Hunt and then Gust. So your your damage is the Hunt, your damage is the Judgment, and... CC wins games, right? Yeah, CC wins games. <laughs> Ezo says he took the Blue Gust. Yes. The Blue Gust. <laughs> it's the Blue Gust. <laughs> Beautiful sleep, Laniba again, and there is the poison over from the Zol. As soon as Sonia gets down here, this fight is all but over. Dahaka is the first to go down. Here's a leap into the back line. He ends up getting oh it. Oh my in. goodness. It is absolute. Co oh, hey, he was killing that. Good follow up there from Rock. Wow. Feeling very comfortable on that new crack. Rowan is playing this really clean. 8 to 1 so far in kills. Almost a full, well, is a full level up now. And no so, rubies out of Deckard either. Rejuvenation potions? Uh, potion of those shielding. Yeah. And now we have super wow. as well. Wow. Roland is, is, they're playing this really clean. Quite a ways away from having an ice block. The Illidan has not yet even stacked. And it's just chore duty now for the side of rolling esports as they rush towards 16s, trying to get Power that double uh, tier advantage rather than one tier advantage, but the double the level Dragon advantage. Knight. I don't see a way that CCS wins this with the tools they have. They're gonna have to I, take a good fight here. Just on I think it's possible. Big engage here. The hunt again. Oh, that could be a full reset there from the Falstead. It is. It is. There it is. Another reset from the Falstead coming in. That's a double kill. And as soon as There's I open my big condition. fat mouth, CCS comes storming back. But it's not over yet. The Turiel will fall. The Zul will fall. It's an absolute bloodbath. Unicycle Ye is self healing out of his mind. He is still staying alive. But a beautiful sleep. Oh. There's a Lee Ming. Everybody be dead. Unfortunately. But Jaina is going to have to do, and she is dead as well. <clears throat> Fight did slightly that. go in favor of CCS, but only slightly, and only thanks to three resets from the Falstead, absolutely blapping all over the side of Roland Sports. <laughs> Not blapping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll find the, the groove. I really think... Uh... CCS has a chance here. Uh, I wouldn't call them out just yet. Nope, oh, there's a leap on the Um, I, 
just asserting dominance? I'm not sure what that was. Level 16s are now online, and boy, you sure like to have Leap at the time like this. Although oh. a great stun and a beautiful pull from Wits End there. And being able to save that Illidan. Single file fight formation. Yeah, I mean, Roland Esports is a very intelligent team. They are not going to take a fight in a corridor like that again. I hope they don't prove me wrong when I say that. Last time I no. said, last time I said CCS is really in trouble. They they uh they won a very decisive fight. So <laughs> chores online. Zul is kind of alone here in the bottom lane. If anybody can get to him, Song does miss though. Here we have an engage onto the Anubarak, but Spell Shield quite good. Potions. There is a sleep on the Valkymer, but gonna be waking up right away. Holy cow! Yeah. They're a talent here down, it's a 4v5. The fact that CCS is able to walk away from this is technically a win. Dhaka is still just kind of vibing in this bottom lane, and he needs to get out of dodge. He's going to have to dig. Oh, is he going to be able to get the stun? Yes! So he's wow. able to get that stun, and now Dhaka is deader than... Okay. Again, the asserting dominance is Mongoose. I think she just likes jumping. I've played against Mongoose to Sonya, and it's not fun. I do not enjoy. It doesn't matter where you're at, he's gonna leap on you and you're gonna <laughs> die and you're gonna be miserable. Uh, we do see the Herodric staff from the Decker, which I really like that talent. I'm typically not a fan, especially if you're going uh, the triangle Dorito talents at once, but into an Illidan, 100% the right choice here. 88 stacks from that Falstad. The only one he really scaling at, although Illidan's got a little bit of used to go on his camp. Everybody trying to run around and clear. <clears throat> Roll one full level ahead. Seven kills ahead. You're going to see them start rolling as one team. That was good. You did well. Thank I'm you. proud of you. <laughs> It's been a while since I've cast it. I've had to save up some zingers. And, and both teams very comfortable just trading for it. So I think uh, this definitely favors CCS. I think this is more of a win condition than top lane is right now. Um, but it's going to be a two for one in the fourth category. I just don't necessarily think you had to give all the bottom. Big engage here. Oh, Dig is down and yeah, super, super dead. It's semi. <laughs> very, very dead. I think you just turn and take mid now. Yep. Knock it down, get it out of the way. Spin and wrap or spin and wrap kind of wreck here. Uh, kind of, sort of. Um, really put the focus on the hunt going directly on it. So, yeah, I guess. Wow, look at Zul just taking the wall there with that W build. Absolutely slashing away at the towers. I Meanwhile, well, bottom camp is going to get some value. See, what did Chris out there? Whoa, Crizzo, be careful. Yeah, what did you do? What, what'd Crizzo do? Did you say something spicy? I hope so. <laughs> Falcon, we're gonna go in and steal this? He's gonna go there and listen on the other side of the wall. I just imagine a red solo cup to the wall. <laughs> what are they saying in there? Oh, Dr. Evil is kind of a Narnia. Luckily, nobody was there to punish him for it. Camp pushing top, Sony pushing bottom. Level 20s are just around the corner. Welcome, everybody, from Raka Stream, all 15 of you. Go teams, this is Aura Windrunner. Thank you guys for joining us. Caught us here in the middle of a great match, the first playoff match of... Season 16 between CCS and Roll One Esports, Division C West. This is the three and the six team duking it out here on the first map of Dragonshire. For joining us tonight is Crizzo, of course. You got real close to the and microphone. And we're having a blast. <laughs> like when we get real close to the microphone, we do it for the fans. We do it for the ASMR. <laughs> Big push here by re one Zad, swinging away with the walls. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the sound isn't the sound. I'm the sound. Thank you for the follow. Our Owen Lunner. I appreciate that. We have CCS stuck in a turtle formation here currently. Oh. 
take a quick look at the Storm Talents here. It is Rewind, Bottomless Flask, or Pain Winter Mute. Again. Kelly, it's a bit, I, I have to read that. Each time a Skeletal Warrior deals damage, reduce the cooldown of Bone Armor and the Rogue Ability by 1.5. Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever taken that. I don't think I have either. I don't play Zolo either. Oh, look at the hunt there oh. and the light bomb oh. combo oh. onto Zola, and Zola explodes immediately. But Juanita, this is what they wanted. Really good disengage here. If they're able to walk away, it's no harm, no foul. They took <laughs> a keep kinda, for a kill. Yeah, a keep for a kill. It, it's kind of sad that they didn't. If they're gonna go pre twenty, they might as well gone a little bit sooner to save the keep. But ultimately, it was a really nice combo there from that Illidan light bomb shenaniganry. If you're roll one, you have to know they're on your camp at this point. If you all went up, oh, they're taking yep. that. That's spicy. Because they're gonna I take. Like okay, this. well, they're gonna go bottom camp, right? So now what? Okay, well we can take their top camp. Very smart. They're actually not going bottom. They're just gonna continue to push this bottom fort and open up this wing condition. And now with both teams having their storm talents available, uh, I think the late game does favor the side of CCS with those double globals. Their wind condition is gonna be opened up here in the bottom lane. Is this going to be a leap? Is this a Not I'm quite. Disappointed, Mongoose. I'm disappointed in you. you. Leaped everything else. I'm really surprised CCS isn't playing the macro game a little bit harder. They, in my style. opinion, are known from a very. They're known for a very macro team. Yeah, and here they pick the comp that just says we want to kill you. Um, so very surprising. Roll, roll one. Definitely, this is their style. They they will run around. Oh, yeah. They will take their little advantages. At the end of the game, you're going to be sitting there with not a lot of kills and wondering where the hell your buildings went. <laughs> I am already through my drain. This is a sad day. You know, we we just gotta take a drink break hmm. in between games. Let's take a look at the twenties here. It is Call of the Wind Hammer from Falstead. Contagion, Nexus Blades, Holy Arena, the additional Sanct, and Inner Fire on the Anduin. Uh, Dahaka has kind of known for. Oh my gosh. Nobody's gonna check it. Nobody's gonna check no. the bush. Oh, the Beetle! The, the, the Beetle! Oh my gosh, the Beetle Let's just got go. a kill! <laughs> Unbelievable. Are we gonna get a leap? No leap necessary here. Zep no is going leap down. Needed. The absolute Chad Beetle spots oh. the Dahaka in the bush. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I'd be so Hold pissed. Hold on by a Beetle. Be so <laughs> oh my god. Well, now let's see what they can do with that advantage here. They definitely know they're on the camp, so this is where roll one's going to be converging. They might be able to cap a quick Dragon Knight. No judge for that crispy taco. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Ooh, we have a big jump here in the mid lane. Zad able to get away. Here is a Sanctification, oh. and Zul is going to be the first to go down. The sleep is not as big as it's been in the past as we see the Cocoon go onto the Tyrael. Unicycle, yay, though. Doesn't have a lot really to slow him down here right now. Oh, the Wits End. There is the rewind. Wits End is There's being solo by the Dubrak. A Dubrak going in for the kill by himself. He's trying to 2v1, and he might just do it. There's a pull from the Anduin. Oof. That Rock was close. Your world, living up to his name. This could be a very dead Dr. Evil. Oh my gosh, Rock Your World has ESP. Yeah, his ESPN's been on really good tonight. He's on the right channel. <laughs> and Arisa called it a Could this be beetle. game? This it is a Narc Beetle. I'm kind of surprised to see them not pushing. Well, I guess they're a 4v3. This, a 4v5. It's a hardcore to end on with just one keep down. Yeah, it is. There we have a big engage from Valkyrie. Yeah, it is a 4v5. I didn't realize it was always dead. Oh. Beautiful oh. stasis there from Zayzon. And one evil with a great disengage. But it's not going to be necessarily enough. Oh. Maybe. Maybe it'll be enough. Valkymer gets kicked into the Nether, but that might actually be good for him. Meanwhile, Rock Your World trying to take his mana and all of his Pokemon cards and go home. He's tired of that fight. You don't want to be there anymore. Again, trading a kill for a keep is uh, rolling esports. 
I don't hate it. That they're playing safe. They're playing smart. And then look at this. And Beautiful we're getting engage. killed. Oh, but there's a sank. The sank was still online. Now Zad is as good as dead. Zad's in trouble. And it's a four v or excuse me, a three v five now. And they have to stop staggering. Making me eat my words. Rolling esports has the advantage still, although Mongoose now getting a little bit caught out. A beautiful block there from Valk, but it wasn't quite enough. Is Forever Pots though keeping everyone up? Yeah. You can really win a 4v5 if that person's on. Use the Decker. I think you could even save your mid port here. But it looks like. Oh. Maniba getting a little bit caught out there, and again, this combination yeah. of Life Bomb and Haunt really working him out. Now for this, oh, Rocker World, is he not going to get it up? No, he gets the kill, and no. Zero gets to come back a little bit quicker because of it. They just got to back up. They just got to back up. All, All right, roll one has to do is just sit now. behind your keep. You have to give this keep. You cannot get caught out again. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane. I think Tahaka, yeah, spots us and is running back as three catapults are marching towards Oof. the bottom court. Yeah, these the Sanks are doing right. work. Sanks are absolutely coming in clutch. This is where you want to see CCS get this Dragon Knight. Illidan's going to be taking this bottom camp. The Dragon Knight definitely secures the keep, potentially the game. Row one's still sitting on top when it comes to structures, but at this point, anything can happen. Harness the power sure, of sun and moon. Moon. Is done. Put an end to this cursed realm. It's the other way around. <laughs> 139 stacks there from the foul stat. Lots of minions to clear in the bottom lane here for Rolvin Esports. All teams back up and healthy. We are 23 minutes into this Dragon Shire game, which is why I consistently will ban this map till the end of time. Do we have engaged? Oh. Really interesting would have been to see if Valkamar had pressed Q there, how that split up the enemy team of Rolvin Esports. Could have really caught I them think is. Yeah, I think so as well. Look at all those potions now surrounding this objective. Sonya, gonna be able to just in time get it. He's gonna hurt out of there. Top is dead, gone forever. And with everybody bottom lane here, you see the side of CCS taking this camp. They, oh, Rolling Esports has no idea that they're here. The Haka's not no here. No idea. Oh, there's an Anduin. Oh, there's an Anduin. Oh, Anduin. oh, no. The team wasn't ready. The team wasn't ready, and Anduin was just right there to die. This is how a playoff match should look. It is. It absolutely is. It's up, Lighthouse. Again, Mongoose in that bottom lane doing a really good job running around, out of vision, being able to get that objective. Buying his team some time to be able to clear up things on the map. Oh, he did not. He didn't actually back. Why didn't he hurt? Oh, he's dead. Is he dead? There's Hunt. But he's able oh, to leap out of it. That's huge. That's uh, multiple alts down now. And if you're rolling esports, now is your chance. That is isolation. Silence that is, is down life bomb. That is Hunt. You charge at the team of CCS now. You guys all top, though. Those are long cooldowns. Basically, Falstad's not going to have an ability till next game. Well, one Easter, uh, that's, yeah, that's the name of their team. But Rock the World <laughs> getting caught out just a little bit here. Falstad is showing in that bot lane. Sonya sees it, but nobody else does. Everybody else is too late to respond. Sonya is down here trying to 1v4. And now here come the boys. Rock your World going in. Not quite finding that stun. Is Rewind used? Not quite. All the alts are still down. There's just not the urgency that you would like to see from Roland Esports. They're playing very conservatively, waiting for them to make a mistake. It's a game of attrition at this point. It's 9 to 13 in kills. XP almost exactly the same right now. Oh, Rocket World is just getting so close. That epicenter nearly paying off, but just not quite 
there. There was no. a of Falstad, where we didn't necessarily see it. I heard it. Maybe you heard it, but it definitely missed. I heard it. Well, Falstad gets caught. There's the rewind. Where's the follow-up? Not quite there, but there's one pull from Wit's End. This camp trying to be taken here, and we I don't know if this is necessarily a good here. idea. There is the engaged the light bomb oh. combo. Juaniva has to. Oh, the sleep. The sleep is big. Unicycle is the first to go down. And vulnerable just a little bit too late as everybody is pressing hard at the same exact time, and I can't really tell who's winning this. But the next kill to go down is with the Haka, and clearly Roll on Esports is looking to finish wow. this game. Beautiful you healing. He's just running core at this point. It's still a tough core to defend, but it is. If you have this but Dragonite, you got five. Dragonite makes all the difference. Thank you for the follow for real. This is spicy. This this is the game I came to cast. Hell yeah. I wish they played a little bit sooner, but hey, what are you gonna do? There's a pull. That's the second pull from the Anduin. Jane is gonna be the one to cap. I think that is the right call to make, and now the core is in a lot of trouble. There's no gust to keep the enemy team off of here, and the laser don't do much, but it is online. We got 10 seconds on Illidan coming up. 160 stacks from that foul stat. Blue team's core is taking damage. Blue team's core is taking damage, and I think you just right-click the core. Everybody there is going to tune on the materials, and that core is dropping fast. With the soul going to be swinging away. One player from CCS gets booted away. It's 50%, it's 30%, it's over. Game one goes to roll it's one. Peace GG. Peace. Great, great match. Take a look at the stats here leading the way in damage. Was that Falstad, Mr. Or excuse me, Dr. Evil? I was going to say Mr. Dr. Evil. <clears throat> 83,000 and 239. Actually, top siege damage, which is probably due to the laser firing down the lanes uh, and killing minions along the way. But also, kind of a crazy uh, stat to point out here. Every single person in this game had either self-healing healing or shielding which is definitely something you don't see and the sonya being the only one in game not to die a single time that's really surprising especially that bottom um that bottom gank the bottom gank that missed and because the falstead used his alt it was a two minute cooldown he still did yep. not have that alt during that last fight and that definitely would have changed things around if Falstead has that all firing down that hallway, uh, no doubt in my mind that we're saying congratulations to CCS here. But instead, yep, you see CCS was... on top when it comes to siege damage, when it comes to uh, hero damage, um, when it comes to the yeah. self healing and shielding. You yeah. know, like this here is a true testament that patience wins games. Absolutely. Only six kills in difference between the two. Um, the punching bag of the match was that Tahaka. He had some really, really bad luck <laughs> in that beetle. Uh, the, I guess the sixth man of the year award is definitely going to uh, rock your world's beetles. going to be interesting to see what does get banned here. I'm really surprised we didn't see too many... Uh, jumps onto Waniba. I think there were a couple, but mostly it was onto the Zul. And the fact that she was able to get those counter engages off, able to get that stale while and listen, um, was was pivotal into appealing for her team, keeping everybody alive, and uh, eventually winning the match. Prizzo has stepped away to go to the bathroom. <clears throat> and, um,. We will get the second map prepared here very shortly. We'll take another quick gander at the talents for everybody to take a look at, but this game, as long as it went on, surely you'd seen them by now. We'll switch screens and we'll see what happens. Awesome game. What a great game one.
bit of Terran music in the background. All right, I am back. I did uh, take a moment to ask both teams, uh, win or lose, what do they hope to take away from tonight's match? Okay. Uh, Valkyrie responded and said, the fact that we got the whole division to talk about Juice Pirates um, with the AI memes today is the real victory. I don't know if anyone has access to no. Div C chat, but there was a lot of Juice Pirate talk today um and rock your world said fun times and growth it's always a pleasure to play valk and crew i think that if you are um if you're playing juice pirates you you, you shouldn't play juice pirates yeah i'm not, i'm not a juice pirates fan i i think I won't. I won't say what I think, but <laughs> I will. <laughs> I'm not I a fan. A, I think you just shouldn't have it in the game. I just don't think it'll be a thing. And and most teams are gonna be able to sniff it out pretty quickly. But in my opinion, it's not fun to play and not, not fun, fun to play, to play against. against. Exactly. Ruins the spirit of the game. We'll say. Exactly. Towers of Doom for game two. I'm excited. I got a feeling this was picked by. Yeah, this was picked by Rocky World, so ooh, I have to update my screen here for y'all. Towers of Doom. So, CCS electing for first pick each time. And we'll see how that comes out for them. I guess that really doesn't tell you much as the icons didn't load, apparently. Do I have things right? Looks like everything is right. I think after this game, or rather the match, uh, I'm going to make myself some hobo nachos, which is just melted cheese over some tortilla chips in the microwave. And I'm very much looking forward to that. That actually sounds delicious. I've been freezing all day today. You know, Florida <laughs> fall has started, so yeah. we're all in our sweaters and Six, freezing. 65 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I was swimming in 65 degrees last month. Warm food in my belly. I had, uh, let's see, so the wife was basically out of Towers, out of Towers, I read Towers, <laughs> out of town today, <laughs> so I had, uh, <clears throat> I had some pizza rolls, I had half a bag of pizza rolls for, for lunch, Perfect. and then uh, for dinner I had, <laughs> this is speaking of hobo things, I, we had some chicken last night that I heated up, and I didn't really want to heat up the rice because I was lazy, so I instead threw some chips, potato chips, ruffles to be specific. And I crushed them up. And, uh, yeah, I had crushed Ruffles potato chips and chicken for dinner. We had for <laughs> dinner. You will probably only know this meal, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, okay. but you will probably only know this meal if you are Southern. But we had a nice warm helping of shit on a shingle. I've heard of that phrase before. Uh, is that like a, hmm, is it like a patty, like a beef patty? Nope. Okay. Well, there's lightness. no patty involved. Lightness. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Chris? It's, it's, it's just a good hearty, you know, home cooked meal. You, you would have to go do your own research because it sounds and looks terrible, but it fills the belly and warms the soul. Uh, okay. Shit on a shingle. What the fuck is that? Excuse me. This is my language. <laughs> I'm usually so good. Oh, no. Creamed chipped beef on toast. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I had in mind. Oh, it's like uh, corned beef. N no, yeah. you don't use corned beef. Don't, don't do it. Okay. Chipped corn... Ch uh, I would just use uh just use ground beef. It's it's fine. 
Yeah, it's it's literally like an open burger patty. That's kind of what I had in my mind, so. It's a good, wholesome, belly feel, belly filling meal. Belly feeling good. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Keladorn. Striker saying I'm a poor thing. Grub up for you. That's okay. I'm just lazy. I have food. I there's plenty of food, but um, I'm lazy. That's ultimately what it comes down to. So it do be like that sometimes. Biscuits and gravy and ham are delicious. I would agree. We are ready. We'll see. The casters are ready. Let's get this show on the road. I feel like does one of these teams play? Um, uh, the, 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 the Vikings. Uh, I would have to pull up my scouting reports. I don't think so, but I know there are hammers around. There are Sylvanas's around. There are Genjis around. Hammers are definitely a thing for sure. Mm-hmm. This could be another spicy match. Whoops. Not the right screen for that. Actually, just kidding. It was the perfect screen for that. Okay, CCS is on the right side again. Beautiful. The backs up against it are CCS. As rolling these forwards take a, a game one victory in this best of three. So, it is winner go home. Season coming to a conclusion here for one of these teams tonight. CCS hoping it's not them as the Garrosh, Stukov, Band, and Tandem again, as we saw in game one. I'm always down for a game three. Hell yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting, and by the look of things, if it's another game, it's a game three, we're going to be here till one in the morning, which as you being. Oh no, you're central. I forget you're I'm Florida, central. Sure the we're okay. The yeah, I'm in fake Florida. Lower Alabama, you know, LA. <laughs> 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 we see the respect band the anubarak was an absolute unit in game one so not surprising to see him banned out here absolute chatosaurus rex was rocky world on that anubarak yeah I'm, I'm pretty terrified of almost all of rock's uh tank options he plays well Hogger last ban. Hogger's good everywhere. Still Brightwing and Joe available. Gonna be really surprised not to see one of those picks here, but maybe if the focus on that new uh, Anduin roll one esports is kind of anticipating this. I see CCS taking a super push comp and not a very uh, team fighty comp at all here. The Crusade calls. We do see the Johanna. Really giving Varian a good, I mean, the, the, no Garrosh and no Anubarak, Varian is very scary here now. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it, says roll one. They just Jaina Sonya and uh, probably pick a Varian and a, and a Deckard again and move on. Both Brightling being available, Sylvanas being available, Li Ming. I mean, there's a lot of things here that can really punish what role one was trying to do last game. Let's see how they challenge that. It's going to be Vala, it's going to be Leo. Unius Vala, is, it, it's a powerful uh, character that they play for sure. With the Vala... What mage do you pair with that? Anything. Do you go with something to... to Honestly, Lee Ming is probably the, the best. Um, yeah. Lee Ming is what I would choose if, if we're picking better. I love Lee Ming, Lee Ming on this map. Really good at poking objectives. Really brutal. Into a tomb. Into a Joe shield. Um, <laughs> Raka saying, Hi, Krizo. Haven't heard you before, I don't think. But now I have, and my ears are Oh smart. my gosh. <laughs> I've casted so many times. Go Balaban, GG, says Cordana. Cordana, I think I've played against you like four or five times in the last two days, by the way, in uh, ARAMs. I think you're always on the other team. Again. Yeah, it just looks like we're running it back with uh, roll one. I don't hate it. No, I really think this should be Varian, though. New flex Mongoose here. Varian's super strong into Johanna. 
bring the mega death. ETC, not as much. Wait, that was picked by Mongoose. I don't even know what's happening. I honestly want some Mephisto, so that's... I, I don't know. They, they do weird things. These are weird teams. <clears throat> Dr. Evil and Wit's End need a healer. It'd be crazy not to be Brightwing. I mean, it would be absolutely insane, especially into an ETC yeah. now. Tarond? Nazebo? Okay. okay, we're just Storm Legion. I like it. Wow. 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 Wow! Wow. So, to your point, um, and I, I've seen CCS have extremely good success with this on uh, Volskaya, is Nazebo will just never be anywhere near the team, and he'll be taking your buildings. And but yeah, you have Nova, who's just going to take Nazebo. <laughs> it's so bizarre. This is so freaking What bizarre. in the world? Both Dr. Evil and Mongoose are just throwing darts at a dartboard of random heroes in the bottom tiers. But I game. love it. Oh, I'm not saying I don't love it. I'm just saying what's happening. They're throwing darts at the bottom tier of the talent pool. And uh, this is where it's stuck. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's it's, go. It's game again. two. It's no cleanse. Do we though. get a game three? I think there's a really strong chance we see a game three here. I think CCS I is angry. Oh, CCS very angry. Trump I hear Valk in angry. my in my head right now. Yeah, it's uh, this is interesting. It's gonna be really interesting to see how these teams play together. Meanwhile, from left to right, their backs up against the wall. It is can't counterpick. Stupid, Doctor Evil on the Zebo, Wits End on the Tyrande, Valkymer on Johanna, Unicycle Ye playing Vala. And Zephy on that Leo. And on the side of Roll One Esports, we have Rock Your World on ETC, Jason on Jaina again, Mongoose playing his favorite Nova, Waniba on Deckard, and Zad on Sonya. I have no idea. I don't see Nova played enough. <laughs> I don't know if Nova has a skin. That's <laughs> she has no skin. Yeah. No skin at all. Take a look at a level one talent that's auto attack. It is blind. It is spiders from the uh, from the Z bolt. Left unchecked, uh, Dr. Evil's gonna <laughs> hurt everyone's feelings. <laughs> Never once heard Valk angry, and I've been playing on CCS teams for six years. The the calmer Val gets, the more angry he is. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets angry. It's, nobody is immune. And to be fair, I think Rocker World and Valk are like the most chill individuals of all time. Oh, Doctor Evil should be super dead, but nobody sees it. The team doesn't see us. Oh no, there's still a chance, but nobody cares. Oh, Dr. Wow. Evil should have been dead six ways this Sunday, but uh, unfortunately, no comms. We got camp started for both sides here. Pretty standard. Rock is being a nuisance, just as he should be. And camps picked up slowly quicker on the side of CCS. I think uh, Rocket World is one of those um, crowd surfer players, so I'm really excited to see how he's going to be able to use that. And here we do have kind of a 1-1-3 started for the side of CCS. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. You have to have somebody come out and respond to this. And unfortunately, it's got to be a move. You see him leaving just now. Really good decision making here from the side. Of rolling esports, Rocket World getting a little bit chunked. Not a big deal here. Mongoose being a pest. Yeah. Bullying Doctor. Wanita. Wanita's uh pot placements are really clutch when it comes to these engages. Shield. 
What did the ETC do? It is Crowd Surfer. Excellent. I'm not surprised. I didn't even realize we have an auto attack Vala here. Yep. <clears throat> Nova in the top lane, roll on esports. Slated to get this middle objective and the top right. That is a piercing owl. Sad getting a spear onto that Nazebo and stabbing him in the back. It's going to be a 5v5 as they have traded on the top. Zephy is in their like swimwear and is losing a lot of his health very quickly. Rock and Roll, though, also getting poked out. Zad going in and now gets stunned. And this could be the first kill of the game, but a huge combo there from Jason. Wow. He was the first to fall. And there's Juaniba again with Clutch Pots. I almost said a dirty word. Clutch Pots. Clutch, clutch Pots. She is the absolute drug dealer of the old men uh, in Hots. I've told Rock several times that Juaniba is the carry to their team. <laughs> she is so scary. Not able to secure that kill, and now Falconer is scooping up Rocky World, trying to body block Jason. But oh, what a turn! Oh, what a wow! Turn from Jason and absolutely blows up the Vala, and now without that unstoppable Johanna in a world of hurt as well, this could be third blood. And there we go, as Roll One Esports feeling more confident than ever going into this tower game. They've always been a patient team. They, they're playing uh, their characters very well tonight. Jason going back for mana. Nazebo not necessarily winning much of the one one right here. Um, he used to do a pretty good job keeping him in check. And now Dr. Evil. Oh, the spear just misses. Oh, it's Dr. Evil could have been very dead there. I feel like Dr. Evil's playing with fire this entire game so far. Yeah, I mean, both teams are very aware of what the Nazebo is there to do. And Rollman Esports is just doing a better job of handling it right now. Time is now, heroes. Bala, could it be able to get this battle objective? Kind of surprised to see, but Wit's End getting engaged on there. Tehran trying to run away. Does get stunned by Waniba's. Oh, there's the damage. Oof. There's the Jaina. The Raven Lord will fall. As you say, the carry of the team getting a massive stun, and then Jaina sitting there yep. just waiting to do damage. I'll just wait for things to stand still and then press all my buttons on that person. Watch them explode. That's the Jaina experience. It is Lornado this time around. Precision Strike, Water Elemental, Mosh Pit, and Leap. I don't love the Lornado into the Mosh Pit, yeah. but we'll see how it uh, all works out. I trust these guys. They they push their buttons well together. So There's the Matum on the Zad in the top lane. Going to be interesting to see if they can get there for an engage. I expect to see a Leap there. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Really wanted to see that Leap. On to Dr. Evil and Unicycle there. If that leap happens, they're both dead. So I think so as well. A little bit of panic there. Anyway, it's Gargantuan time. In two, Falling Sword, Starfall, and Reign of Vengeance. As the Water Mental is popping the bottom lane here, trying to get some value. Rock Your World is trying to... It's no shield. I don't think they realize that there's no shield here. Yeah, they don't necessarily have to be afraid of this all. Dr. Evil is in Narnia. Gets caught by his own Nazebo wall. There's a slide from Rocket World and Jason can be able to clean up know. that Nazebo. And Tomb onto Jason, though. No ice block. And there's just no damage here. There's no threat. Valkamar is in just a little bit too deep. Going to be able to pop that Falling Sword. Meanwhile, objective is up in the bottom lane with that Nazebo still being down. Expect to see Roll on Esports go and clean this up. 
Hopefully we don't see the, the falling sword as only a means of escape. I think it can be pretty powerful into this team if, if used right. I am a little bit surprised to see this as we have a big engage here on the Valkyrie. On just dumping all of that damage and Jay's on all the damage into the tower there, taking it to nearly half health. Meanwhile, the yield gonna get some value in the top lane. It's a little bit closer to the same talent here. As they may be four kills ahead, uh, talent tier wise, they're very close in experience. Echo pedal. It's really interesting to see Nova uh, top damage right now. Anti armor shots. Rocket World doing a great job of getting out of there. Wits End is really caught out. It's surprising you don't see a slide. There it is. There's a Mosh. Mm. It's a two man Mosh. There is the last, the precision strike from the Nova. But Jaina is first to fall after that Tehran initial kill. Leo to follow. Rock runs away from yeah. his Rock. pots. <laughs> Rock does get out of there, though. Another fight going in favor of Rolling Esports. Rise again. But it wasn't by much. That really could have gone either way. I think as long as CCS gets 20s, they're going to have a much better chance. Having that upgrade of 20, having the Buried Alive. Uh, excuse me, upgrade 20 on Joe. Nova's the most underrated hero in the game, says Izo. A true degenerate. Izo is the most underrated player in NGS. In our Discord. <laughs> <laughs> the snipe there from Saran doing a massive amount of damage to Jason. Both teams just trying to yeah. the same talent as well. That owl's gonna hurt. Yeah, the owl's gonna gonna mess people up. I could get a kill. I'm calling it. It's gonna get at least one kill this game. I say three. And for what? Hundred and twenty seven stacks more than Nazebo. He is cranking right now. Gone. Yeah. Twenties are are definitely gonna <coughs> change the name of the game. There's an Entomb on his ad. He's going to have to leap out. And now there's a Gargantuan. This is what we talked about. Dr. Evil going in here, getting this off lane pressure. And look at how much damage this does. Just one Gargantuan combo. And by the way, he's going to have to get in 60 seconds, taking half a tower completely uncontested. Power in the bottom lane. Roll one is not sitting around waiting for things to happen. They are going to be taking this bottom tower with these pumpkins. Now, yep, oh, you... a oh, it's a oh wow. Oh, there's no stun available for Wit's End. Down goes the Vala. The Joe gets caught as well without the unstop. The beautiful managing of enemy cooldowns from Rock Your World, being able to effectively get that Tomb out. Excuse me, that Mosh out. Rock's playing really well tonight. Yeah. I'm I'm really impressed with the, his timings and whatnot. They want this win. Be swift, heroes. Nova's in the bottom Do lane. Zad trying to take this top. Do we have an all coming out? If it is, it's going to be too late. Too late. Yep. And we're down. I mean, this game is nearly over. Seven to twenty-five. This Holy cow! Only twelve minutes in, but it it is looking like an absolute landslide for the world of esports. And now we see a game here in the mid lane on the Zephy. Is it going to be enough? No. It's allowing them to just retake bot though. Sword, get his team out of danger. That could have been the game right there. They have to be flawless. Meanwhile, in the top lane, it's gonna be interesting to see who wins one for one. I'm pretty sure it should be the, the Leo. Yeah. Yeah, you have uh, Nazebo coming up to you. 
He's trying to anticipate where the leap is coming from. Not quite able to do so. Mm. You know, we're going to fall 100%. This is the map to come back from. It is Towers of Doom. Good it's Towers there. of Comeback. Just like uh, crashing. I still think CCS has the more powerful uh, 20 if it can uh, last that long. I do too. How many deaths does the Valor have? Two. Yeah, not terrible. 1717 before this fight here. Rocker World is getting really chunked, but Unicorn is getting absolutely zoned out. Mongoose is zoned out as well. The Entomb does miss. Everybody from Roll 1 Esports is kind of low. They're chasing down Jason right now. There is the ice block and a beautiful leap onto Johanna. He's going to be able to get away, but Zephy is in there to win there. Somehow Zephy's still staying gone. alive. Oh my god. He's trying to, trying to uh, cap, but he just needs to fight. He needs to fight, he needs to win, and they need to win a fight right now. Zad getting really low. Mongoose coming in with that Nova kill. A beautiful kill onto that Leo. Jason still fighting for his life. Waniba doing everything she can to keep him alive, but it's not enough. The Jaina is going to fall here. <laughs> Lornado coming in, trying to peel Rocket World. It's so low. Zad has no business being anywhere on the map. Waniba running for her old man life. Oh, the slide does get interrupted, and that is going to about do it for this team fight. Valkymer coming in for uh, the Valor able to get that there kill. There we go. CCS. They are not down around. and out yet. Hanging around. Downtown by myself. <laughs> the Lornado. Booping the gargantuan away is actually hilarious. <laughs> 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 but, nevertheless, this worked. We're gonna go I'm yelling timber. The boss is still up, and while I when I think you have this camp, I think you have to take boss off the map. Well done. Yeah, just get rid of it. Get the points on the board if you're CCS. Um, may as well. Oh, thank you, Linehouse, for uh, reminding me. I knew I pressed the button and it looked weird. My bad. Linehouse likes to complain a lot. I, yeah, I, wouldn't, like I wouldn't worry about him. I'm okay with them not taking this top. They were really <laughs> close to a six cap. They are really, really close to a six cap, six cap RCCS. Yes, but I, I think you hold it because Rowan's taking a yeah. bot oh, back. This middle is dead. <laughs> so much holding. Pumpkin's landing. One pumpkin is going to be still alive up here. Will have to be dealt with. Dr. Evil backing for mana. Level 20s, unbelievably, are here first. For the side of CCS, even down five kills. <laughs> Leo is going to be able to CCS has roll one running yeah. back and forth. They just, and they're doing a great job. They're taking the towers here. This is where CCS, once they have this lead now, are able to put the foot on the gas. This but is what they've needed. Level 20s are brutal for the side of CCS. They're going to have Farflight Quiver, the Heaven's Fury upgrade, the Buried Alive. Vile Infection, those are some very scary alts for Roll 1 to deal with, as they are going to have to try to take their towers back into a Nazebo. Luckily, the Persistent Strike from Nova is going to help quite a bit. And this is where, yeah, I think yeah, we just take, no, I don't know if you take boss yet. Not yet. You, you need a, Less at least point. one down. Yeah. Tornado precision strike value, which is a sentence I've never said. It doesn't seem right coming out of my mouth. 
And CCS just running around the map, yep. taking what is rightfully theirs. Nope, I saw it, Rock Your World. I saw that. What did you do? What happened, buddy? I missed it. He tried to crowd surf over the wall and bonked his head against the wall. <laughs> 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 he kind of like stumbled in the corner. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> How do you come back from this if you're roll one? You like, what do you do? Do you know. leave? You have to, you have do to you leave your forts? You have to win a fight. You have to leave. I your wouldn't forts even run it. One and yeah. Just... You run at bot, like. Yeah. Save bot, leave mid, and run at them. Rocket World is, is wanting to engage in the fight here. So this is what he's set up to do. The time is now, heroes. Claim the altars in my name. Zephy is just there. It could pop a silence into him and it would be huge. But he loses half his health in nearly a blink of an eye. I think this fight is going to go in the hands of uh, Roll One for sure. I don't know. They have too Rocker much disengage. World is in a lot of trouble. And there's a silence too. Leap onto the back line is good, but the unstoppable is better from Johanna. And CCS right now with a kill advantage is looking to end this fight. Unicycle Ye has to get in there and fully roll one off of this objective. And it looks like he's going to be able to do so. Another single objective as the round goes on. Yeah, which is really a monkey. And now, roll one. Now we're 10 7. Precision Strike is still online. He's gonna be able to clear some of these waves. That owl's doing work. Side of CCS doing a much better job negating the value of the Deckard. Only seven stacks on the scroll if identify for a 20 minute game. They're doing a really good job. CCS has taken boss off of the map. They are evening up the game. They have all the momentum in the world right now. They have three pumpkins to push in. Thankfully for Roll One, go slamming into the fort. Roll One's just on the, the back foot trying to keep up. They're literally just tower defense simulator right now. I don't. This is almost where I would like to see Roll One have gone bottom here and try to take a fight. They can do this all day, but. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. Unfortunately, you can see the vision come through. They know they're coming. Jason is a little bit behind here. Has destroyed a fort. Wits End doing a great job getting vision for his team. It's looking like this is going to be the final showdown here. Take the altars and put an end. Rocket World doesn't need all these needs. The Entomb misses, and there is a huge engage, but a beautiful disengage from the Johanna's Rocket World. He's absolutely schmelt in the back line. Zad has nowhere to go but back. Jason's going to have to do something special here to get his team alive. What a potion there from Oniba, but it's not going to be enough. Monku's still trying to take out Dr. Evil, not quite able to do so. Javala running wild and running into game three, carrying the team on her back. Waniba, <laughs> bonking Valk over the head with a stick. You're going to take that lane down, Valkmar? GG's have been called. Congratulations to CCS as they force a game three. <clears throat> Chris, are you awake over there? <laughs> He's muted. <laughs> oh, Crizzo, where'd you go? Did he send me a message? Nope. He didn't. Crizzo's just gone. Congratulations to CCS. When it seemed like all was lost, they grabbed...
Ow, my ears. I'm, I'm not gone. I have been talking. My microphone died. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. They have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Have CCS. Never say GG early on this map. I know, but I have to. I have to give it some some spot, You know, I have to. I have to make it exciting for the fans. I know it's the comeback map. I get it. They came back. They did a great job. CC has played their hearts out. And we go they to did. a game three. And we're all excited. It's game three. It's playoffs. This is what we're here for. This is an even matchup between two teams who are playing really, really well tonight. I'm so. You're kind of cutting in and out. Your mic is trying. <laughs> no! Please don't scream. You're so loud. <laughs> Zombie wall does more damage. That's interesting. Took the seven, but not the sixteen. We're gonna fix the mic. Okay, go fix your mic. The level twenty power spike from CCS was ridiculous. Safety and numbers. Awesome map. Leading the way in damage. Nova and the Zebo from Dr. Evil. Two early deaths from the Vala, able to be overcome by the fact that the Vala got to 20. I think about 160, 70 stacks, somewhere in there. Hopefully that's a little better. Yeah, you should be fine. Again, almost... Both these teams almost entirely picking heroes that have some sort of self-healing or shielding. All but two that game. I mean, a lot of these were the same heroes, but still. Yeah, I think level 20s in that match uh, really turned things around for CCS. They, they stayed patient. I mean, look at the kill count. 9-9. Nine to nine. Um, they, ju they just had to hold on, and they did, and once they got roll one on, on uh, the back foot, the back foot, yeah, they, they couldn't keep up. Have a good night, Raka. Be able to catch the vod in the morning. I'm sure there'll be plenty of postings about it in Div C chat. <laughs> Bye, Raka. Later, Tater. <laughs> Back to the screen. I think the only fitting way to end this match would be to play on Infernal Shrines. The most played map in NGS. It's gotta be. It sure as heck ain't gonna be Sky Temple. There we go. It's going to be Infernal Shrines. Where else? Who is this picked by? Let's see. Picked by Team 2 again. This is a classic Mac to end on. I like it. Raka, here's how much these teams didn't want to play Braxis tonight. Uh, Roll One Esports first ban Braxis, and then the third, the final ban for CCS, they tried to ban Braxis again. That is how much these teams didn't want to play Braxis. So, unfortunately, no overrides tonight on the Braxis ban. I'm getting retired. Getting very tired, actually. It's been a high octane game.
<laughs> you know, one of those double negatives. What would you like to see on shrines, Blue? What do you prefer? <clears throat> Big, scary things uh, on, on the objectives. You want to see a Tychus. You want to see a Tassadar. Deathwing. Blaze. Something to control that giant circle. Even an Alex Straza, if they want to do something spicy, would be really cool to see Mephisto? Here. Mephisto is disgusting as well. Takes a little bit of time to ramp up. Doesn't quite provide as much siege, but into the right comp, Mephisto can be extremely powerful. Tank Chromie? Not as much. Oh, okay. Uh, we have tried to run main tank Leo on this map. It did not work. <clears throat> um, <laughs> that old comp that we used to run and uh, another team I was on was the main tank Imperius with Orphea, Decker, Tyrande. Ugh. Uh, that was really fun. I hated that comp. <laughs> fun to play, not fun to play against. <laughs> yeah. There was... Oh, what team ran that disgusting Mephisto comp? It was Alex Straza, May, Mephisto... Uh, it was like another tank or something weird in the four-man. That was the four-man. And you just couldn't get to the Mephisto, and there was so much setup and so much crap on the ground to walk out for. Watch out for it, excuse me, and it was, it was nuts. I'm trying to remember what the hell that was. Blaze off lane. Not even Blaze in the form. That's what it was. It was Blaze four man. Blaze, May, Alex, Mephisto. That sounds like a comp we could see tonight. I've only ever made main take Leo work into a Joe. Yep, we did run it into a Joe. That was, that was the plan. We also ran... <laughs> main tank uh, stitches with a four man Diablo the other day, and that was pretty fun. Can we get a dad joke, Rock? I'm stressed out. I think we are going to get a dad joke from Mr. Rock Your World himself. Lobby has been created. We're about to start, but. <laughs> I don't know if he's actually going to give him a dad joke, which if it was me, I would not. I would be so focused on the game. All I want to do. <laughs> no, he's not. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. He wanted a dad joke. It's playoffs, Valk. This is the playoffs. Playoffs? Yeah, playoffs. Infernal Shrines. We want that win. Whoops. Don't worry about what I'm going to be watching after this game is over. It's definitely not YouTube. <laughs> I think I didn't have anything on Savory up there. <laughs> you know, this is also a pretty incredible Deckard map. It can be. But what will we see Deckard for a third game in a row? Do we play it? Do we ban it? I don't think it's necessarily worth banning. It's no CC. If anything, you just overwhelm it. Talking playoffs. Blue team is banning. No blaze on any of these maps. No, Hogger. Hogger was banned, I believe, by roll one at some point. Nubarak taken out yet again. Oh, and no six. Brightwing. Yeah, no Brightwing. All game. Both teams don't play Brightwing. It's just fascinating to me. It's not like she's been meta for a month. It's been the last two years. Meta pick. Brightwing. Same bands coming out. Yeah. Yep. More of the 
the same. And there's the hogger. So, let's first pick Anduin. And do we roll it back? Do we see Spice? Do we see the Cho'Gall? Do we see the Juice Pirates? Yeah, they, they really talked a lot of game for not bringing up Juice Pirates. Do they dare? <laughs> if this, is this pick just Jaina? <laughs> it's gonna be Sylvanas. It's the Joe again! Unsurprising. Still very good here. And Sonya Jaina. Right? It worked game one. It did not work game two. How do we feel about game three? I feel really good about a Blaze and Brightwing. My blades are Get a Sonya oh and a Jaina. Come on. Running it back. I guess play what you know. <laughs> I can't do that. I just could not play that the hero three games in a row. It would just drive me crazy. And we get the Bala. Do we get a Leo? No, we get a Rhaegar. Okay, okay. Surprised not to see the Ando in there. Again, look out for 20s from CCS. Well, something tells me it's going to be a W build Vala. It's just, it's just a tendency for Valas. They can't help themselves. They see Infernal Shrines, they have to pick W build. And I implore you, you <laughs> don't have to do that. You're still going to have a W uh, ability with that hero. Only you're going to be able to actually kill something if you take auto attack. From the back of the bar, boo, get no material. Yeah, exactly, Cordana. You get it. This could definitely be a zero tool angle, though, from Mongoose. He's the only one that's been... Yeah, I don't hate that. Especially with the Vala, the Rhaegar. Oh. Deckard. No Deckard. So what do we get? Play we get an Anduin. Else. It's obvious. It's we get an Anduin here. Prove me wrong. I really think something like an Anduin... And, uh... A light bomb Sonya could be pretty disgusting. Hey! Oh my god. Oh, there's the blaze. Main tank blaze. That's okay. That tells I've seen me it work. Mongoose is also playing some sort of tank, I feel. Or another bruiser. Uh, what would work here? Thrall? Could we switch? Well, we know Mongoose can play the Sonya. What do we put in the off lane with Zed? Um, White main. What is happening? It's a little too much CC for me to want to play white main here. What is happening? There's the Fisto. What is happening? What is this? What are these teams? What are these drafts? I, I don't know. I don't know what to think. All right, let me let me process. Uh, I think I like roll one's draft a little bit more. I, if all you have to do, I mean, the sole objective of CCS, which again I'm imploring this Vala to go auto attack build, is to just keep Vala alive. And it's yep. double mage, and the only real threat is the Sonya. And if it's falling sword. You just make sure you're holding that over the Vala. You keep the Vala alive, and she wins the game. There's nothing that can Do you stop take it. Falling Sword into double heals, though? Uh, like, with yes, double heals. I think you do. I think you just play for the Vala. But, like, if, if you're CCS, if you're roll one, uh, you have a really good shrine comp. You, you have hard call. if you're roll one. Anyway. <clears throat> Enough, enough speculation. Let's get on to it. Game three between CCS and Roman Esparts. We have Valkymer on the Johanna. Dr. Evil playing the white main. Zephy on the Leo again. Wits End on Rhaegar. And Unicycle Yay on the battle. battle. In... And for roll one, we have Mongoose on Sonya. Rock Your World on Blaze. Zad on Mephisto. Jason on Jaina. And Waniba on Anduin. 
do get a jad joke there from Zephy. Why do Juice Pirates wear underwear? To hide their booty. Oh no, that Q in the bush tells me. Okay, it is auto attack. This is gonna be a, probably a bloodlust game if you're the Rhaegar. It's going to be very weird to see what kind of setup they have going on here. Take a look at the early door talents here. It's a light well from the ambulance. Neutral stun pack. Good on stop pop there from the Joe. You're going to see a lot of that this game. If you're the Johanna, you're definitely going to be clicking on the uh, additional unstop. The lower cooldown talent, rather, for it. Here's the thing. If you're a Blaze, you just kind of... Ton. Almost got the kill. I don't think I love the bloodlust angle at all. No? You have the Vala, but what else do you have? I mean, why else? Well, first off, why would you go stop Vala? But I, you know, I've, I don't know. The more I've seen many this, people take W build with uh, Ancestral at 10 and 20. I don't love the, the bloodlust angle. Wits End is just kind of soloing this camp here under the nose of rolling these boards. Doesn't matter what's happening up here. Down here is where the action is. The camp is being absolutely swiped. Wits End doing a great job of getting that. I, I don't know. The more I'm looking at the comps, I think I give the favorite roll on these boards just for the amount of nonsense they have in the game. I think either way, both comps have to be played right for either team to work. I think they're both going to have a bit of struggle. I really want to make sure we see... It's got to be auto attack slows from. Well, doesn't have to be auto attack slows. The blaze. Double heal, double healer, the additional spell power. Spell power. And the, technically, the buff that Blaze got might be a good thing. As we see CCS trying to uh, trying to steal this camp. Good rotations here from Bow One, making sure they check their check their six, make sure no one's standing behind them there. It is only subdue though, it's not the hold your ground talent at four from Johanna. It's gonna be full ring build from Static Carrier. CCS is first to objective. Yep, they're gonna be able to get so I up. don't know how much that's gonna help here. Leo is top trying to clear his means. This is trying directly in favor. Oh, about a little bit of resistance. Oh, some new quest is done there from Johanna. That is not yeah. a small quest to complete. However, Dr. Evil getting real low on mana, getting real low on health, and he's going to be the first flood here of game one. And Zephy is sitting in that top lane, doing as best as he can. And I said a lot of things before, but the thing I really wanted to highlight was the fact that Rolvin Esports has an incredible shrine comp. They have the blaze, they have the fisto, they have a big circle and chain at the set up the point. And they are going to be really tough to bully off that point. John Cena looking angrier than all heck. <laughs> Valkmer going to be able to drop this over the wall. Pop that unstoppable. It is only Mortar Punisher, which means this fort is likely to survive. Probably will not even see another jump here from John Cena. Although if it does, on a unicycle, he would have been a lot of trouble. Mm. One more jump. You Let's see their their heals mid. I think you just try to siege. Another stack there from one Nilo. That's two already. Left the blades there in front of Regina. Very far away though from that ice block. Only 500 hero damage, chilled damage. Excuse me, from that Jaina. Speaking of overall damage, not a ton, but the only kill of the game is from that Jaina. Very aggressive stance here from CCS. They really confident with that double move. Although, the best. Oh, just got onto it. It is Rock Your World now. It is going to be a 5v5 for this camp. 
This could be a major turning point in the game. The pull off of the camp. Johanna will die. It could have been. Death worth the camp. It could have been really bad for, for one of these teams. It ended up being just okay for both. And Mephisto was getting some value in the small little corridor there. Hello, Kyle. Wits End is in trouble. Oh my gosh, everything missed. Oh, everything missed, and he scoops away the Borco. Able to scurry away. Fan would call that sidestep king moment. Does catch the Vala. Wow, the Vala's in trouble. He's trying to bunker in front of the wall to stop people from getting away. Wits end though. He's got more healing than Rocker World has uh, has damage to take. That was a great engage. Yeah. Didn't get much, but it, it looked good. <laughs> As husband and wife, you expect Rocker World and Waniba to be on top of their combos. No other time in NGS have I seen the charge forward E on the light bomb uh, and work effectively as it did. So kudos to them pulling off that ridiculously hard combo. That's why I play Murder. Here, light bomb me. I'm going to jump over a wall somewhere. that Mephisto, but the Johanna, or Waniba going in, trying to save herself, trying to save her team, is going to effectively do so. There's a leap on the back line, does hit Dr. Evil, but there's an Ancestral, and it's just so much healing. It is an absolutely get down, protect the president comp here from CCS, and it's working. Meanwhile, we are doing real things. Is it Neil Peasants? It is Neil Peasants. Roll One Esports has to stay focused on the objective. The objective is to fight on the objective. Nothing else matters. <laughs> As they lost a little bit of sight of that here. Johanna is going to take a little bit of damage, pop the unstoppable, and walk away. 21 to 4 so far in favor of CCS. They're going to go and get their taps and come back in here angry. Almost all the ultimates are online for both teams. 10 seconds away. The only thing really missing is this ancestral. Rocker World can really only front to back with the fact that he is playing uh, a blaze. There's a the two onto Mongoose. Light Bomb in a bunker, which I don't know if I've seen that either, either. <laughs> You'd like to see more people utilizing this bunker, playing around this bunker, being able to get that armor, get some damage down. Rocker World is trying to do everything he can, but a massive leap into the back line from Mongoose. Hits three members of CCS. Both low mana are Dr. Evil and Unicycle Yay as the Arcane Punisher does go in favor of Roll 1 Esports, even with that 20 uh, Spider Monkey lead. There are so many buttons being pressed, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell you as best I can. It's, 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 it's absolutely wild there. I think they're really deciding uh, ultimate of that fight. Ended up being the lead in the background there. Hitting both the Val, excuse me, all three the Vala, the Rhaegar, and the Steel White Man. Rowan taking a two structure lead and getting good damage on Keep. Yeah, White Man. Double globes there. One evil wanted those globes so bad. Pistol now with that hysteria talent. It's gonna be an absolute nuisance. So
Sonya. I'm gonna be cleaning up all these camps. Wait to see if they show and they do. Mongoose is gonna take camp. And with Battle Rage, shouldn't be that much of an issue for her to do so. Five stacks from the Anduin. No blood left, by the way. I'm not sure I, I went through the ults, but it's Scarlet H is Entomb, Falling Sword, Ancestral Healing, and Rate of Vengeance. And we, I believe, because roll one hit first, we uh, covered their alts, but. Nearly full level head. Use a side roll when esports two forts ahead more importantly. Validide? No, it's not gonna die. Yeah, I think uh, Mephisto at 16 is gonna do even more work than he's already doing. Yeah, top damage definitely is that on that Mephisto 33k leading the way. Just really hard for CCS to win the objective. And they didn't really take anything to macro while the objective's up. So if they have five man on the objective, that's fine. If they take a fort, okay, you can kind of trade that and kind of play for 20s. But when you can't really siege and you can't really win an objective, how do you win the game? They're going to have to get a good pick. They have to catch somebody out and create opportunities else. So now we kind of see this. Everybody is setting up the bottom. CCS is here the top lane. You're going to get this fort. This is one of the ways to do it. That's what I'm talking about. Prestige still is pretty slow. and uh, going to get that, maybe. We have a big engage here onto the Johanna. She's going to be able to get away. Water Elemental is pop. Jason, obviously very comfortable on the Jaina. As evident from the last hour and a half of Jane of play you've seen from him. Or her. What is... Oh, that's the elemental on my screen. That's very weird. It had, like, a weird icon on the map. I'm not familiar with seeing that. Once again, CCS says closer to objectives, so they'll be able to set up first. And they're gonna looking take to take board. that bottom port. See, and this is the CCS I... This is the CCS that I played against. The irritating run around, take my buildings while my back is turned. And they're really, really effective at it. Taking that fort, I'm surprised they didn't commit more to it because it would have taken away their tap on the bottom side. <clears throat> this is going to kind of force uh, roll one to play top side. It's not preferably favorable just because of how little space there is in the maneuver. Although the fort didn't go down, so tap's still available here. Rocket World almost soloing the Valor with one E in the back. Two comes out but doesn't really get anything. Scarlet Aegis is popped, and so is the Light Bomb, but both are missing. There is Mephisto Ball landing onto the Val in the back, but it's a great cleanse for both the Healer and the Falling Sword. Ancestral being used on the Valkyrie as well. One Rocker World is getting very low. Jason, massive damage there from the Johanna. The leap is huge again. Why is he leading with that? The leap is a free man every single time. And now Mephisto is going to be able to potentially clean up the rest of this fight. Meanwhile. Did you, did you even realize that Roll1 was just winning the objective? Because I, I have no idea what's happening anymore. No, I didn't really understand either, but because of their massive There's so damage, many buttons. <laughs> because of their massive damage, uh, they very quickly took that after the fight was over. Traded one for one, one Rhaegar for one Jaina, but 16s are online. We have Antichor. Joe Top. Oh, she's backing now. That means that there's a stun there from Zephy. Holy. Oh, white main good. Blaze is really, yeah, gonna have to be careful with that power. But this assault just gets by the wayside. There's a punch here to be able to get this heal. But there's only three members here on the side of rolling each board. It's their time to assist and push. It's definitely faster. And they recognize that. Punisher has been slain. All the leans pushing out. Full level lead again from the side of roll one. We're going to hit 20s first, barring some sort of major catastrophe on their end. Two to four in kills, 15 minutes in. Let's see where the next objective goes. It's safe to say Roll1 Esports definitely has 
be momentum. However, we've seen them have momentum in the past. And they've come back in a big way. All the ultimates being pressed here is kind of an interesting fight. You don't really want to fight in an open corridor on the side of rule one. This definitely favors the side of CCS. And now there's an entomb, excuse me, the uh, light bomb combo. For the first time, this is this game. But it's a double kill for the side of Roll on Esports as both the Johanna and the Leo go down. And this heat is definitely going down with it. Once and again, Roll 1's playing very, very clean. Yeah, oh my gosh, the cycle is getting so close to getting caught there. I just think if he gets caught, he just dies. I, I don't think you can end. I don't think you have to end. I think you can get your 20s. I think you can win one more objective. Win more, one more objective. And take the game. Leo's going to be up shortly. You don't want to get untombed under core. The, uh, CCS had one comeback in them early in the second game earlier in the match, the second game to be specific. I'm getting tired, Crizzo. It's been a long match. These teams have just been absolutely hammering each other for an hour and a half now. Two hours, actually. And There's I'm a lot tired. going on. There is a lot going on. Excuse me, I had to blow my nose. That's why the camera's a little off center there. And we see we lurking in the shadows is Roll Winnie Sports. They have their power die ready. I don't know what... How do you, Whatever the sport that is. Uh oh, he's <laughs> oh, there's a Rhaegar. That's a Rhaegar. That That's a Rhaegar. Face check you push. Oh no. Oh, oh, he's able to get that off. Wow. He's the healing enough. He still goes down. Here's, where's the leap? Now there's oh. the leap. Out of Johanna. And I think we just end now, right? I think the game is just over. Wits end. Face checking the bush. Getting caught out. Level 20 is now three dead. For the side of CCS and Lowell and Esports, Core has been called Unicycle Yay, trying to do his best and actually doing a really good job. They are getting really, really low. Unicycle Yay has to be, this is what I was talking about. Big at 20s are very scary. There's nothing to contest this Vala unless she gets caught by something. There's one kill. Unicycle Yay still popping off. The damage is good, but there's a lot of minions on the Core plus a camp. Now, getting caught by that Mephisto ult here. CC House is fighting Rock for the lives. Down. Unicycle Ye has put the whole team on his back and he's trying to uh, <laughs> try to get the kills. He's doing the best he can. Mongoose is hitting core. Everybody's hitting core. The minions are hitting core. 10, three, the game is over. And there it goes. Unicycle, wow. not quite able to do it. Holy cow, you could see his APM rise. This was an insane series. Man. I really thought Unicycle was going to pull that off. Look at the damage discrepancy, though. Aside from Unicycle, it was, uh, it was all, all roll one. Incredible series, two incredible teams, and even better people. Congratulations to Roll One Esports. GG's. Wow. Was that number six taking down number three? Yep. Is that the first upset? It's the first upset. Check your brackets. US playoffs. Check your brackets. Holy smokes, what a match. I think that was my favorite series so far this season. Um, Intense on both sides. Yeah, I guess I think the last one I did was another best of three that was pretty nuts. But this was, I mean, this was playoff, uh, playoff hots if I ever saw it. Um, I suppose we can hit up uh, Rocket World and the rest of the gang see if they want to come in and say some words. Get them in. Uh, where should we go? Let's go to, uh, let's go to Lobby 1, I guess. Maybe Lobby 1.
I've invaded your channel. Welcome. Welcome. How are things? Sweaty. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but good. How are things with you guys? I'm a little hoarse. Just... I ran out of <laughs> I ran out of drink about towards the end of the first game, and then you guys played for another hour and a half. So I'm a little winded, as I'm sure you are. I, I'm not going to make this about me. It's, it wasn't my me playing. I just watched, but I felt it's always about the. It's always about the caster, and don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. <laughs> I felt the emotion of the game, uh, and I felt uh, I felt the passion in the teams. Those were some pretty, really interesting games, really interesting comps, different play styles. It was it was great all around. Chris, do you have anywhere you'd like to start? Uh, I'd like to start off by saying, "Holy cow! Great job! You guys uh, played super disciplined tonight." Um, I was really impressed. Yeah, those were two teams that uh, that know each other really, really well. Well, you guys have been around um, for like 35 years, so... And pretty, pretty much. much always in the same division, so... Uh, so, yeah, and even, like, you know, I've been with Roland for just a couple seasons now, but, like, even before then, I was still playing in the same division with all these guys, so me joining the roster is not exactly an unknown quantity. went to game one we went to Deshire, um which was remarkably the most landsided game of the night and it it wasn't really i mean that one fight again could have gone either way um some interesting alt picks all around um what were you guys able to to do game one to really give your give yourself an edge i think anytime you're dealing with multiple globals it's important not to overvalue the objective. You can waste a lot of time when you have an advantage by chasing the objective instead of doing something else productive. So I think that was first and foremost on our mind. You know, hey, we've killed two of them, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get the DK because they can global all over the map. So we need to make sure instead of chasing the DK, we get a camp, kill a building, do something else that is going to be guaranteed value rather than chasing your tails on the objective. Yeah, and I think uh, you saw I think, that. I think they had 72 globals that first game, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they had they had a couple. Um, and with the, the hunt and the light bomb combo, trying to deal with that, I mean, Waniba probably needs a new keyboard and mouse because <laughs> she, it, she was giving it her all and really carried that first game into a win because oh, without yeah, those man. sleeps, uh, without the potion placements, the stuns were insane. Um, that would have been a much tougher game for you folks. To stay a while, real. to completely like stop their momentum and enable us to counter off the back of it, she had at least three that were just totally momentum changing. I agree. I agree. Waniba's uh, counter engages and end engages uh, really helped with that that map. The uh, there were a lot of factors that ended up towards that game being a victory for for your team but the final nail in the coffin was actually you um getting away on that bottom objective i thought you were backing and then something stopped you or did you just think that you had time to get out i don't remember specifically which point you're talking about <laughs> so you were just before the final fight uh, on the left side siege camp um, you had recapped the bottom and it, it was the right. last time and you were getting chased down and there were several alts that were used on you that ended up missing and you, you were able oh, to... Oh yeah, because I hit out. leap a half a second before I got CC stunned into oblivion, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The Falstad not having the, the ultimate because it was a two minute cooldown, he missed everything. It's a two minute cooldown. He did not have that fight in that final corridor which would have decisively won the game for CCS. Uh, instead, no ultimate. All he could do is throw a hammer, and that was about it. And uh, yeah, so you were the you were the catalyst for for that fight. I don't remember exactly if I stopped the back or I, I mean where I was. I had to have stopped it. I don't specifically recall why. Sure. Um, but I knew once I got out of there, and 
both Rock and I were calling when this silent when the uh, isolation expires, we we got a counter because they just blew all of their buttons and we're all alive. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that that was pretty big. Him and I were both saying just wait about five seconds for these silences to go away and then we got to run them down. Yeah, and that was that was absolutely the right call. My my favorite moment maybe. Zephy, if you're listening, you want to turn down the stream or turn it off, is when the beetle ended up catching him in the top <laughs> lane. Uh, somebody called it the narc beetle. Um, ended up going through that bush a half second before Dahaka had, had, had gotten out of there. Um, yeah. Which was, was really unfortunate for him and, and great for you guys. But um, really hard fought game, game one. We go to Towers of Doom, um, which was an absolute back and forth one of those you know comeback maps um unfortunately for you folks they had a johanna vala nazebo and leo that power spiked into oblivion at 20 um and it was just so hard for you guys to get your buildings back yeah it was a combination of the the power spike leo naz specifically but the other two as well but but all and also before that, with our comp and their comp, once we fell behind in structures, it was going to be basically impossible for us ever to even it back out. So once once that happened, um, our only real shot was to find them in a team fight. But when they're controlling all those buildings like that, your your avenues for finding them in a place where they don't really see you coming are very very small. There's very few places to surprise them. So. I mean, we really had pedal to the metal about one to sixteen or so. They took a good team fight, took control of the map, and after twenty, it was, it was real tough. Yeah, they did a great job of of just putting the gas down there, and by the end of it, um, it uh, it went their favor, and they played it really well. And uh, I think you guys had, had basically played it as best you could with what you had. You had to try to take a fight when you were down a bunch of buildings and ultimately came yeah. up on the wrong end of that one. But <clears throat> thankfully, it gave us an incredible game three as well. We take a look at. I mean, the... it, it's always game three with CCS. That's what I said afterwards. I was like, well, we didn't put that one away, but it wasn't meant to be because we always play three games with these guys. Excellent. Um, I forget which order. You guys ended up, well, you had the Jaina initially, and you last picked Mephisto. Is that mm -hmm. just in response to the double support? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And obviously yes. crushed. Worked extremely, extremely well. Um, I really thought the Vala was going to extend the game. I really, really thought she was going to pull off just a miracle on Core. Um, but you guys played your comp exactly how it was supposed to be. You guys were a shrine comp. You fought really well. The only time you guys didn't fight well was out in the open where they were able to get the value of the Vala, the value of both healers. Um, and ultimately, you guys were able to hit the core enough to drop it to zero, and you guys are going to be moving on, facing definitely another another tough Div C West team. Yeah, man, about, about one through, I don't know, seven or eight C West, all those teams have taken games off of everybody. It's It's pretty tight. <clears throat> yeah, it's um it's been it's been truly a really good division. Um so hats off to whoever whoever placed that. Um but yeah, Crizo, anything to add? Yeah, last thing for me, um so your next match is gonna be against either number two only losses or number seven Seeb. Seeb. Um, Seeb. Who are you guys? more excited to face off against again um i don't know if there's really one or the other uh i think i i know the guys on Seab a little bit like better personally so it's it's always fun to play against your friends you know so that that would be fun but but beyond that i don't there's not really a, a really you know a preference i'm excited to see how you guys fare you guys are my number one pick to take all of sea west so i'm excited to don't see what happens in the future down. oh thank you There's a little no a little humble pie there mr stop. number one seated Crizo there i <laughs> look at my look at my sheet that i sent to valk you guys are my number one uh pick for sure well i appreciate it <laughs> uh hopefully we'll we'll see you later in the bracket so that's that's the goal one thing at a time <laughs> 
Among you guys thanks play for the well. time. If you have any shout outs or anything you'd like to say, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, a couple shout outs. First of all, casters. Um, love casters. It's one of the most fun things about playing in NGS is getting your game casted. So I appreciate both you guys taking the time. Uh, CCS, those guys are always a lot of fun. Um, Valk is my foe arch nemesis. So we always love playing Valk. Um, and then, as always, uh, our sponsor, Osmo, and NGS Spouses. If our spouses don't watch the kids, then we can't play the games and enjoy the video games. So NGS Spouses, partners, best spouses, best partners. Heck yeah. Well, Thanks, yeah, boys. Thanks for the time. You have a wonderful night, sir. Good night, guys. Thanks. Go celebrate. Thanks, bud. Well, Crizzo. We haven't done this a lot this season, but I appreciate the time. Let's do it again sometime. Let's do it. I think we can find some not other uh, some other Div C teams that maybe we can cast. Let's do it a little bit early next time. Yeah, but let's maybe not go until <laughs> 10 p.m. So the rest of the world can watch us. But again, congratulations to Can't or excuse me to Roll One Esports. Oh my God, I need to go to bed. You're off the team. I'm off the team. Because oh. changing his sheet on the daily. Oh. Nor doesn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll never tell. Well, thanks for the time, buddy. I hope you have a wonderful night. Thanks we'll for having me. Later. And for NGS, my name is Eternal Blue. Thank you so much for coming out to support this wonderful organization, these wonderful teams, Div C West. Congratulations yet again, and I'll say the right team this time to Roll One Esports, winning 2 1 over counter. Can't counter pick stupid. Hope everybody has a wonderful night, and we'll see you in the Nexus.